Hey, what's up guys? So full disclosure, this video is sponsored by Bliss Kit. However, I have been using their tools for many years, so it's, you know, I'm, I'm rather comfortable talking about it and sharing my opinions about it. This is not scripted or <laughs> approved by Bliss Kit in any sense. I've simply been told to make a demonstration video and this is a demonstration video that I am making. I uh, hope you enjoy this. So really quickly, I'm just going to talk you through the setup we have today. We are running the uh, Mythic C2 framework. It's an open source C2 framework. It's uh, awesome. And then we're going to be using its Apollo C Sharp agent. And the reason I'm using a C Sharp agent is just to showcase some of the features within the Shellcode Pack Pro kit. Um, obviously, we got both Macro Pack Pro and Shellcode Pack Pro on the machine. We're going to be testing against the Windows 10 VM running Windows Defender 4 endpoint. It's cloud connected. It doesn't have any exclusions. You're just going to have to trust me on that. Uh, and first, we're just going to do a quick test to make sure that our Apollo agent is working. So let's just double click that and we should see a callback popping up any second now. There we go. We got a callback. If I open this up and type help, you can see that we have a bunch of options we can choose from. One of them being the shell command. Let's just run shell calc.txt to confirm that this agent is in fact working and everything is hunky dory over here. There we go. We got calc pop agent processing the command and then getting the output on the next callback and it's good. Let's just kill that agent. So let's just exit that callback and then we're going to hide it just for uh, for aesthetics essentially. Cool. So let's open up Shellco Pack Pro. I'm going to be using the GUI. Uh, the GUI is currently going through a major overhaul, so it might look completely different in the next release if you're watching this in a couple of uh, weeks after the release or later. However, you should be able to find the same options. When I use this personally or on, on engagements, I do like to use the CLI myself, but for this demonstration and for demonstration purposes, I think the GUI will, will work just fine. So I'm going to select the input here, which is going to be our Apollo C Sharp binary. It's going to detect that this is a C sharp binary and it's going to ask for the class and the method. So in, in this type here, we want to type the namespace, which is Apollo dot and then the class, which is going to be program. And then the method to call is the main method. So essentially here, you know, if you want to do something, if you already have an obfuscated uh, binary that or DLL, then take a look at the classes using something like DNSPY and figure out where this entry point is at. For the output, I'm actually going to be using uh, the Python source code uh, uh, script. And this is kind of fun. It sounds really dumb. Why would you use Python to deploy onto a Windows machine? But it's one of those things that EDRs have to account for. And a lot of EDRs are just really bad at accounting for scripting languages like Python. Uh, so, you know, realistically, uh, this would be great if this was an assume breach case. What I typically do, you know, during an assume breach or I, I do given remote access or physical access to a laptop or a work machine, I just go to the Microsoft store, I'll download and install Python. Usually AppLocker or Intune policies aren't going to complain about that. And now we get Python. Uh, there is, however, a second option, and that is when we use Macro Pack, because Macro Pack has a built-in template for bringing and launching a Python file onto a machine, including the Python scripting environment or interpreter. So if you Google bring your own interpreter, that is something that has been going on for many years now, and it's cool to see Macro Pack also jumping on that train. And it is, uh, in my opinion, really cool and effective. So I'm going to be using the Python source code for now. I'm just going to be calling that csv parser that sounds like a really common python script uh, i'm not going to choose any container for now you can click next and then here's one of the other great value propositions with shellcode pack pro and macro pack pro is the bypass profiles so both these softwares comes with a json file or json files sorry defining a bunch of set options that have been tested and confirmed to bypass given edr solutions now obviously as an operator after you know launching the payload, you have to be careful what you do. This won't, you know, if you try to dump LSAS, these profiles won't help you. But these will help you get at least that initial callback, and they have been tested. Again, one of the best value propositions with Ballist Kit. Um, I'm going to be selecting the Defender Bypass profile. I'm just going to leave it as it is. I am, however, going to enable the uh, Python obfuscation option. The UMC bypass option is also really important, especially when you're going up against uh, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. And there's some other OPSEC things I want to talk about here. So expiration date, always set an expiration date on your payloads for when the engagement is supposed to end, maybe a couple of weeks after, just to be sure. This is so that nobody can fire or test or debug or I mean, at least makes it harder in the end 
uh, after the engagement has been completed. Also, always limit the payload to a specific domain or host name. So this right here is going to look at the environment variable user domain. So if I just go over here and I type echo user domain, it's going to say the host name if it's not domain joined. So I'm going to take that host name and paste it into here. And that way, this payload will only run on machines that has that environment variable set or given, you know, has that host name. The reason you want to do this, even if you're just testing in your lab, is that most EDR solutions will just share your payload willy nilly in sandbox uh, sandboxes all over the place and attempt to run them. So this will limit that. So you, you won't get random ass callbacks from from sandboxes all over the place. Uh, let's just hide this. Sorry about that. And there we go. So I'm not going to select anything else. That's going to be it for now. I'm just going to click generate. And this will now generate that Python script for me. So let's just give it a second. Also, this command line window is really handy. So after you're tested, you know, you have a lab environment, you've tested your payloads, you find something you like, you could just copy this command line and save it for later. And the next time you don't have to go through the GUI and select all the options, you could just run that command line. So now we have the CSV partial.py. I'm going to copy this out of the VM and copy it onto the disk of the machine with the 10 before endpoint in it. Give me a second here. I'm just trying to find somewhere to paste it, going into this machine. And then let's paste this Py script and see if Windows Defender nukes it. So definitely didn't nuke the script right off the bat. Let's try to run it. Pops up Python and let's see if we get a callback. And there we go. We got a callback from that machine. Let's move into the interact and let's just list out all the running processes and see that in fact we have Windows Defender for endpoint running. And there we go. So MS MP engine, that's the Windows Defender process. And MS Sense, that's Windows Defender for endpoint process. So yes, we are definitely running a machine with Microsoft Defender for endpoint on it. And we have ran at least one uh, C sharp uh, a command. Cool. However, as I talked about, delivering Python files through phishing probably isn't the best idea, you know, unless you have some really good information as to why that would be, you know, something you would like to do. Uh, so let's take a look at how we can further extend this using macro pack. So I'm just going to exit out of this process right there, exit that callback, and then just hide the callback. So for aesthetics, and close that out. And then let's open, uh, let's just close the shellcode pack and open macro pack. So again, MacroPack's GUI is also going through a complete redesign. It's going to look completely different a couple of months from now. But again, for demonstration purposes, I wanted to use this GUI. I'm going to select the scenario here. There's a bunch to choose from if you have a DLL or even a PowerShell command or just straight a plain old shell code. I'm going to pick the drop and execute an embedded Python file and its environment. So this will allow you to generate a bunch of different interesting output payloads in different uh, formats that will actually bring the Python script and the Python environment onto the target environment or into onto the target machine, sorry. And yeah, you don't have to worry about the target having Python pre-installed. I'm just gonna pick that Python file. It's on my desktop called CSV parser. And I'm gonna uh, pick a payload name. So super legit file. And then we are going to uh, select a format here. So what do we want to select? Do we want to use a symbolic link? Do we want to use a PowerPoint presentation with macros, management console? There's a bunch to choose from here. I think I'm going to choose just to showcase how good this is. I'm going to pick something really dumb. So I'm going to pick good old HTA, super old initial access uh, extension or type, I should say. Let's just go next. And then again, we have our amazing bypass profile option. I'm just going to pick the fender bypass because I know then that, you know, by all accounts, this will uh, get past Windows Defender for endpoints. Um, should I pick anything else? I can choose my own execution method. Let's just leave it to VMI for now. And then, yeah, that's it. I'm actually not going to pick anything else. I think most of it should be fine. Uh, we can delay the payload execution. We can add a USC bypass if we want. Um, we can choose another renaming method. We already added our domain limitation or host name limitation. We don't really need to worry about that. And yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do that. There's a bunch of options here uh, that you could look through, and these are going to be very more interesting if you have a specific phishing scenario that you want to perform. Let's just uh, generate this. 
and again we have that command line you can copy that out save that for later and there we go we have our super legit file.hta let's move back into windows defender for endpoint here and let's just drop this hda file onto the desktop Defender for Endpoint didn't nuke it initially, which is a good sign. Let's just run that and move over and see if we get an initial callback. I'm going to give it a couple of seconds here, but I have high hopes. And there we go. We got a callback from Dave. Let's again list out the processes and see that the Defender for Endpoint is in fact running. It's processing the command. We are waiting for output. There we go. We got our output. We can see MS Sense running and we should also see a MS MP Engine running. So yeah. Uh, again, this could have been ran on the machine without Python installed. It would just drop it its own environment and run it. And again, I'm, a, I'm actually a huge fan of this Python uh, script generation concept. I do like it. I think it's, it's weird enough to get around some really specific things. And it's, I, like, yeah, I, like, I like simple stuff. And with that, I really hope that I was able to demonstrate the feature sets and uh, you know, utility that is Shellcode Pack and Macro Pack Pro. Uh, again, been using this toolkit for many years. I genuinely believe it adds great value for small penetration testing and red teams that doesn't necessarily have the time or money to perform their own research and have dedicated tooling to use like this. Outsourcing something like this co makes complete sense. And yeah, you can get 5% off both tools using the code FLANG24. Uh, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.